We've seen a lot of iconic moments go from comic pages to live action and more than half the time, it's pretty cool. So let's go over some memorable moments from Marvel Comics that we have yet to see in any of their movies. Well, I'm sure we've all seen this page from Instagram or YouTube or Reddit without having to actually read the comic it's from. This is from Secret Wars 2015 where God Emperor Doom is an all-powerful asshole and is pretty much the most OP character in the whole universe. So in this scene, Thanos talks all this shit to Doctor Doom, but you know what? I guess he couldn't... Back it up! <laughs> I'm so funny. I have to admit though, I am one of those people who have yet to read this comic, but to be fair, I am reading everything that builds up to it right now, like Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and all that, so I'm patient, okay? I'm trying to be patient. Anyways, this page is so iconic. I remember seeing a Marvel Legends figure for this Doctor Doom, and one of the accessories was Thanos' spine. That is metal as fuck, dude. So when can we possibly see this? Well, the two most obvious choices right now are Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars. I can see them putting in this scene to establish the Iron Man Varian as a threat. I mean Dr. Doom. Sorry, not I'm in Varian. I, I don't know where that came from. I, they're clearly two different characters. <laughs> Silly me, sorry. But again, we've already seen Thanos get bitched a couple times in Marvel's What If, so I don't know if it's gonna have the same impact. And I think if they do it like this, it's gonna be a cheap way of being like, hey, remember this big, strong bad guy that we were all scared of? Well, this guy is even scarier and stronger, right, guys? However, I think if you're part of the general public who has no idea what happens in the comics, seeing this on the big screen will be an absolute shit yourself moment. Or they could somehow bring Thanos back and make it a whole Stark vs. Thanos rematch motif. Actually, they Confirm that Robert Downey Jr. is playing Victor Von Doom, not Tony Stark, okay? If you think these movies won't touch on the fact that Doctor Doom looks exactly the same as the main hero for 10 years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you're either insane or you have to get Mickey Mouse's dick out of your mouth. I guarantee you, it's gonna be a point of conflict between the Avengers and Doctor Doom. You, you're a hero now, Earth. Like, you can see that happening, right? Also, let's not forget, it doesn't have to be Thanos for the MCU version of this scene. This could easily be the end credit scene for the new Fantastic Four movie where instead of Thanos, they have Kang. Hey, remember that big army of Kangs that were meant to be the biggest threat to the multiverse ever? Well, here's an even bigger threat. Then we see Robert Downey Jr. hold the spine of a CGI Jonathan Majors. Whatever way they choose to do this, if they get this right, this has the chance to be top five most badass scenes in the entire MCU. But if they fuck it up, at least people can be like, Oh my god, they did the thing from the comics. Oh my god. And then later be like, whoa, that was so shit. The comics actually did it really better. Let me tell you about how it happens in the comics. We probably won't even see the scene anyways because I'm pretty sure this is considered way too violent for a Disney Avengers movie, so don't get your hopes up. I know what you're gonna say. Oh, we already got Galactus in Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. <laughs> Did we though? Because in my memory, Galactus is a being that can size himself to be the same height as New York City skyscrapers and is dressed in complete purple. What we saw in that movie wasn't Galactus, okay? That's what I see after I ate too much cabbage. Okay, but yes, I know they hinted at his actual form through like the shadows and oh my god, did you not see like, like the silhouette of his hand and his helmet? Shut the fuck up. That's not something I can except as Galactus. Like, are you kidding me? Seeing Galactus staunch in New York City like an absolute unit carries an aura that is simply unmatched. Like the arrival of this giant being is a symbol of impending doom for the entire planet unless someone does something. I don't want to do a Dormammu situation again where they turn him into a cloud because he exceeds the need for a physical body or something. Shut the Fuck off. And judging from what we've seen so far from the leaks of Fantastic Four First Steps, they look like they're cooking, okay? So I'm just gonna wait and hope for the best. It's a shame we won't be able to see the whole all the heroes and villains unite to attack Galactus to defend Earth kind of thing because it's just a Fantastic Four movie. But that leads me to the next thing we have yet to see in any of the Marvel movies. If you don't know what the ultimate nullifier is, it's basically a weapon in the Marvel Universe that can eliminate anything that the user wants. So when Galactus first pulled up to Earth, the Fantastic Four pulled it out and threatened to use it and were like, yo, you better back the fuck up or you're gonna catch some smoke with this ultimate nullifier, bitch. And this weapon was supposedly the only thing in the universe that Galactus was afraid of. For good reason too, like think about it. Anything you point this weapon at, it'll disappear from the entire universe. Like. Forever. High school bully? Bam. Entire mosquito population? Bam. Childhood memories of your parents' neglect? 
Okay, maybe it's not strong enough to do that, but you know, it's still pretty powerful. But I think if the ultimate nullifier does appear in the MCU, it's gonna be as a joke. Like, Reed Richards is gonna pull it out and be like, this is the ultimate nullifier. It can eliminate anything from the universe, leave now, or we will use it against you. And in classic MCU comedy fashion, it will just fall apart while it's holding you or something. I know. How funny. How ridiculous. Ha 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 ha. Good one, Marvel. Even if they do get a functional one, I don't think it's gonna work in the story because I'm pretty sure it's gonna end with the Fantastic Four migrating over to the main MCU timeline because the world gets destroyed by Galactus or something. So yeah, and also I can't exactly imagine this device existing in the MCU considering how OP it is. Like this is like Emilia Clarke's character from Secret Invasion. Like they're just not gonna bring it up again, you know? Well, at this point, I think it's pretty safe to say that we won't be seeing this matchup unless there's some multiverse bullshit that happens. And listen, I know we saw Aldrich kill it and be like, I am the Mandarin. But that no longer counts because we saw the real and better Mandarin in Shang-Chi, so. I mean, the fact that we'll never get this fight is pretty insane, right? The Mandarin is Iron Man's arch nemesis. That's like having Batman never interact with the Joker, just some guy inspired by the Joker. Also, yes, I understand that some people think that there are some racist connotations around how the Mandarin character was originated and that the MCU actually dodged a caricature. Look, you weak apology for Genghis Khan. I can take anything you can dish out. Like, bro, they call a Chinese guy the Mandarin. That's like calling a Mexican character the Spanish. Creativity overload there, folks. But the MCU eventually did a pretty good job with the characters, so, you know. But if you've seen Iron Man Armin Adventures or anything, it's pretty insane that we'll never see this matchup. I guess Disney thought that putting a white guy hero against a Chinese villain would have hurt China's box office money really badly, so... Actually, that's probably the main reason, now that I think about it. Yeah, that would have... Yeah. That would have done it. Well, seeing as how we're getting a Craven the Hunter movie that pretty much deviates from everything that the character Craven is meant to be, it's pretty safe to assume that we won't be getting this story anytime soon. If you don't know what the story is about, it's Craven the Hunter who sets out to truly prove himself to be superior to Spider-Man. He's not a hunter just to kill, he wants to prove that he's better, period. <laughs> also, the guy's really fucking old and there's something about like he has slow aging, so there's lots of discussion about mortality and stuff, it's pretty deep. And despite what the pages might look like, it doesn't actually involve the symbiote the story because it's just a fake black suit that Spider-Man wears. Recently we got a loose adaptation of this in PS5's Marvel Spider-Man 2, but it wasn't as personal and Kraven had a whole army to fight for him and shit, which isn't really the Kraven style. The story is also known for its iconic cover of Spider-Man pulling himself out of a grave, which looks metal as fuck. So how could they incorporate the story into live action at the moment? Well, like I said before, it's gonna be a while before we see Kraven the Hunter interact with Spider-Man since Sony's too busy pissing down the Spider-Man IP down the drain. I've said this for a while now, but if Sony was so eager to use Kraven the Hunter, he should have been the villain in a Venom movie. It makes perfect sense, like Kraven sees Venom on the news or TV or whatever and he's like, I've hunted every predator on Earth. If I hunt an alien, I can die peacefully. That will make me the greatest hunter to have ever lived. That's as far as I thought that. I don't know how they incorporate the other stuff from the story, but um... Yeah. But seeing Kraven vs Venom, that would be pretty badass in a movie, right? So the real question is, how could they fold in Kraven's last hunt into the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies? I don't know, considering Kraven's last hunt actually relies on his history with Spider-Man, it might be a bit difficult to do in a single movie. I think Kraven's half-brother Chameleon could be a good alternative. Like, Chameleon has been other people's whole life and his final goal is to replace Spider-Man and have his life. That sounds pretty decent, right? Well, one problem. Chameleon will apparently also be in the Kraven the Hunter movie doing God knows what. What I'm trying to say is we're fucked, okay? We should just push Spider-Man back into his grave because we ain't gonna see the story in live action for a while. And if that rumor is true about how if Sony uses a Spider-Man villain before the MCU, the MCU can't use is it? We're done. We'll never see the story ever. I mean, they'll probably borrow the grave imagery at some point, but not in the exact same way in the story. It's like how they did with the Spider-Man lifting up the building. Like, if this be my destiny and he fucking just launches it up. They kind of did the same thing, but the story was different. That's what I have for this week. I had a bunch more on my list, but, you know, editing takes a long ass fucking time, so I'm gonna stop here. Let me know if we should cover more of these. Let me know what Marvel moments you want to see in live action for once. And yeah, check out my Instagram. Check out my second channel for random vlogs and videos. Check Check out my letterbox and I'll see you next week. See ya. And one five in the open night. I can't help that I feel so lonely. How many times do I have to die?